Today we're going to be comparing this $1,000 pre-built gaming PC from CyberPower PC to this $1,000 build we put together. We're going to break this video down into categories and choose a winner for each one. We'll go over aesthetics, convenience, power supply choice, cooling, future proofing, performance, and overall value. But first, let's compare the specs of each system. For our PC build, we opted for an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X processor, a Thermalright Burst Assassin 120 ARGB cooler, ASRock's B550 Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard, Gigabyte's Radeon RX 7800 XT Gaming OC graphics card, 16 gigabytes of Team Group's Vulcan Z 3600 MHz DDR4 memory, a one terabyte NVMe SSD from Crucial, Fantex's P400A mid-tower case, and ADATA's XPG 750 watt core reactor power supply. For the CyberPower PC Gamer Master, it comes with an AMD Ryzen 5 7600 processor, a low-profile RGB CPU cooler from Cooler Master, an Asus A620 chipset motherboard, an NVIDIA RTX 4060 graphics card from Zotac, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory from Team Group, a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, CyberPower PC's own mid-tower tempered glass case, and an 850 watt power supply from High Power, which is an offshoot of Surtec, which OEMs power supplies for some top PSU brands like Thermaltake. The CyberPower PC Gamer Master also comes with an RGB keyboard and mouse combination that would likely cost $40 to $50 if you were to purchase them separately. Let's start out our comparison by talking about the aesthetics of each system. Both systems have fairly similar designs. They're both built in black mid-tower cases that have tempered glass side panels and full-length PSU shrouds. Both PCs feature four RGB case fans and an RGB fan on the CPU cooler. For me personally, I think I like the look of the ring RGB fans on the CyberPower PC system a bit better than the full RGB lights on my build. Or maybe it's just that the RGB lights look cleaner through the tempered glass panel on the pre-built system. Of course, the tempered glass front panel on the CyberPower PC system will hinder its airflow and cooling performance, so the cleaner looking RGB lights on the front panel may not be worth it for everyone. But I do like the bulkier air cooler in my build and the bigger graphics card. They fill out the case a lot better and help give it a more powerful look. I also don't like how the CyberPower PC system comes with the red CyberPower PC lettering on the PSU shroud and how they opted for a red stick of RAM. Both stand out a bit and not in a way that I like. Overall though, aesthetics are always going to be subjective. I think I'll call this one a tie and let you guys decide which system looks better. As a matter of convenience, there is a clear winner here. It is without a doubt far more convenient to opt for a pre-built system. You order it, it arrives, you unbox it, plug it in, and turn it on. There's no assembly necessary. Whereas with building your own PC, especially if it's your first time doing so, will take some time and you could run into problems along the way that will delay your ability to get it set up and running quickly. Furthermore, if anything were to go wrong with your pre-built system and it needed to be sent in under warranty, you could just send the whole system in. On the flip side, if you build your own PC and something goes wrong, you will need to first identify which component is the problem, take it out of your build, and then send it in. Because when you build your own system, every individual component is under its own warranty. You can't just send in your whole system to one of the component manufacturers and tell them to fix it. That's not to say that dealing with warranty issues with a pre-built system is easy. Shipping out an entire computer isn't convenient at all but your responsibility in the warranty process is much more straightforward with a pre-built system. So without a doubt, the CyberPower PC Gamer Master offers a far more convenient option than building your own PC does. Power supplies are incredibly important to ensuring that your components get the appropriate amount of power. Cheap power supplies can ruin your entire system. With my PC build, I was able to pick the power supply and ensure that I was choosing a quality unit. I chose ADATA's XPG 750 watt core reactor power supply. This is a power supply that has received solid reviews from experienced PSU testers and has received a gold rating in efficiency from both Cybernetics and 80 plus. It is considered to be a quality unit. On the other hand, the power supply used in CyberPower PC system is an 850 watt unit from High Power. High Power is an offshoot of PSU manufacturer Surtec 
who makes many power supplies for different power supply brands, Thermaltake being an example. Surtec has made some quality units, and the power supply in this CyberPower PC system could be an excellent one. In fact, Hardware Busters reviewed a 1000 watt unit from High Power a couple of years ago and gave it a good overall rating. That unit also received a Platinum Efficiency Rating from the Cybernetics Certification Program. On the other hand, High Power also has a 650 watt bronze rated unit in the Cybernetics PSU database, and so there's obviously different levels to the quality of the PSUs that High Power produces. The model number on this high power unit seems to suggest that it is a gold rated power supply, but it isn't listed in the Cybernetics PSU database, and there are some 80 plus gold rated PSUs out there that aren't that great, so that alone doesn't ensure a quality unit. Ultimately, with no in-depth reviews done on this specific power supply, and with me not having the proper equipment to test the unit myself, all we can really do is guess as to the quality of this unit. All factors seem to point that it is a decent enough power supply for this system, maybe even a really good one. But there's no way for me to tell. And really, that is one advantage that building your own PC has over choosing a pre-built option. You can make much more informed decisions about each one of the components in your build. But as we cannot say for certain whether or not the high power unit in the CyberPower PC system is a good power supply, we'll give this category to my build, where we do have reviews to go off of that point to the ADATA power supply being a quality unit. For cooling, both of these systems feature four case fans and an upgraded CPU cooler over AMD's stock option. We opted for Thermalrite's Burst Assassin 120 ARGB cooler and the CyberPower PC system opts for what I believe is Cooler Master's A71C low profile cooler. Of the two coolers, the Thermalrite Burst Assassin offers a slightly larger fan and a much bigger heat sink, which in theory should make the Burst Assassin provide a bit more cooling performance. However, as both the Ryzen 5 5600X in my build and the Ryzen 5 7600 in the CyberPower PC Gamer Master are not power hungry CPUs, the real world advantage of using the Thermalrite Burst Assassin likely won't be that significant in the grand scheme of things. What is more significant when comparing the cooling capabilities of these two systems is that the Fantex P400A case we chose for our build offers a full metal mesh front panel to maximize airflow coming in. Whereas the case that CyberPower PC has used for their Gamer Master comes with a tempered glass front panel that only has small ventilation cutouts on the sides. Of the two options, the Fantex P400A in our build is going to allow for more airflow coming into the case. So with the slightly better CPU cooler and the full mesh front panel, our build will offer the better cooling performance. For future proofing, which one of these systems will be the easiest to upgrade down the road? Our build has one major downside to it when it comes to future proofing. We opted to use an older AMD AM4 socket CPU, and now that AMD has moved on to their newer AM5 socket, we will be limited in our CPU upgrade options later down the road for our build. On the other hand, the CyberPower PC Gamer Master opts for a newer Ryzen 5 7600 on AMD's AM5 socket and therefore should offer a lot of CPU upgrade options well into the future. That's not to say that I cannot upgrade the processor in my build to a newer generation option a few years down the road, but I will have to purchase a new motherboard and memory to do so and it will require me to disassemble my system to install it all. Either way, I think the fact that the CyberPower PC Gamer Master utilizes the newer AM5 socket makes it the more future-proof system. Although it should be noted that there was nothing stopping me or you from choosing an AM5 socket CPU with a $1,000 budget. I could have downgraded the GPU in our build and swapped to a Ryzen 5 7600, an AM5 chipset motherboard, and DDR5 memory. However, I wanted to maximize my in-game performance now to try and get as much performance at 1440p resolution as possible, and the older AM4 socket saved me enough money to allow me to get the 7800 XT, which in turn gave me the in-game performance I was looking for. But for the sake of comparing these two systems, we have to give the future-proofing category to the CyberPower PC Gamer Master due to its better ability to upgrade the CPU later down the road. Now let's talk about the performance difference between these systems, which will likely be the most important category for most users. Comparing the performance between these two systems will really all come down 
to the combination of the Ryzen 5 5600X and RX 7800 XT in our build versus the combination of the Ryzen 5 7600 and RTX 4060 that come in the CyberPower PC system. And more specifically, really just looking at the two GPUs, the RX 7800 XT versus the RTX 4060. We benchmarked both of these systems in six different games at 1440p resolution at a variety of graphics preset options. We tested these systems in Cyberpunk 2077, Starfield, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Baldur's Gate 3, Fortnite, and Power World. In Starfield, we benchmarked these PCs at the ultra, high, and medium presets, and for our build, we turned FSR on, and for the CyberPower PC system, we turned on DLSS. As you can see, even NVIDIA's superior upscaling technology, DLSS, was not enough to help the CyberPower PC system match the performance of our build. The 7800 XT just provides a lot more performance in Starfield. Our build was able to maintain about a 30% performance advantage over the CyberPower PC system on the ultra and high presets. In Cyberpunk 2077, it was more of the same, with the 7800 XT in our build proving too strong for the RTX 4060. However, it was interesting that the RTX 4060 was able to offer over 50% more performance at the Ray Tracing Max preset than our build was. In this scenario, DLSS really helped the RTX 4060 pull ahead. But after that, our build outperformed the CyberPower PC system by a wide margin, including both at the medium and low ray tracing presets, as well as in the non-ray tracing ultra and high presets. In fact, with ray tracing turned off at the ultra preset, our build offered nearly 110 frames per second on average. That's a 40% performance advantage over the CyberPower PC system. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is another game where our build really outperformed the CyberPower PC Gamer Master. This is partly due to the fact that AC Valhalla does not offer support for DLSS, although you can use mods to get it to work. We tested both PCs at the ultra and very high settings. Our build offered about a 40% performance advantage at both presets. The performance difference between these two systems and Baldur's Gate 3 was fairly tight. Our build was able to run BG3 at an average of 104 frames per second at the ultra preset and 107 frames per second at the high preset. That's only about a 15% difference over the CyberPower PC Gamer Master as it achieved an average of 89 frames per second at the ultra preset and 91 frames per second at the high preset. And given that BG3 isn't really a game that's going to benefit from having a super high frame rate anyways, the real world experience these two systems will offer in this game should be very similar. In Fortnite, we tested both builds of the Epic and Performance presets. Fortnite is sneaky in how demanding it is to run at epic settings. Most people just don't realize it because anyone who is playing Fortnite seriously likely isn't trying to play it for its graphics quality and won't be running it at epic settings. The 4060 and the CyberPower PC Gamer Master really struggled to handle Fortnite at the epic preset without DLSS on, averaging only 31 frames per second, whereas the RX 7800 XT in our build averaged about 90 frames per second on the same setting. Of course, and again, this isn't really a fair way to judge either system as you probably won't be trying to max out Fortnite. Switching to the performance preset, both systems were able to achieve really high average frame rates, with the 7800 XT in our build hitting over 300 frames per second and the RTX 4060 in the CyberPower PC system hitting over 250 frames per second. Ultimately, both systems can run Fortnite at good enough frame rates for competitive play, but the 7800 XT in our build will offer more wiggle room in the graphics settings you can leave on. Power World had the smallest difference in performance between these two systems. However, as the game is still in early access, you might have to take that with a grain of salt. The CyberPower PC Gamer Master was able to maintain an average of 89 frames per second on epic settings and 93 frames per second on the high preset. Our build hit 92 frames per second on epic settings and 97 frames per second on the high preset. So both systems performed within 5% of each other. It should be noted though that these benchmarks were conducted a month or so apart, and it is possible a patch could have been released during that time that would have helped the CyberPower PC system gain a performance advantage. Either way though, if you are looking for a new PC to play Power World on, either of these systems will handle the game at 1440p 
on max settings fairly well. Overall, in what is probably the most important category to judge these two systems off of, our build was able to provide a significant performance advantage over the pre-built CyberPower PC Gamer Master. And this is the true advantage of building your own system. By cutting out the labor required to assemble the system, you can obtain higher performance for the same cost. Still though, the CyberPower PC Gamer Master is no slouch, and the combination of the Ryzen 5 7600 and the RTX 4060 are good enough to work for 1440p gaming. It won't be the best option for high refresh rate 1440p gaming at max settings, but if you're willing to turn down some settings, you could make it work. In reality, I think the CyberPower PC Gamer Master would make even more sense for 1080p gamers, as the 4060 will provide excellent performance at the lower resolution. But in the end, if getting the most performance out of your budget as possible is your main goal, building your own system is the way to go. And for this category, our PC build takes it easily. In terms of overall value, there are a couple of things that the CyberPower PC Gamer Master comes with that my build does not come with that need to be discussed. There's also the issue of storage capacity. But first off, the Gamer Master comes with a keyboard and mouse combination. If you do not already have a keyboard and mouse, that's $50 or so that you won't have to spend if you opted for this CyberPower PC system. This isn't the greatest keyboard and mouse ever, but it's not a bad combo either, and it will work fine for most users. Additionally, my build does not include the cost of Windows. You will absolutely need to install Windows on your build if you want to have the option to play all of today's top titles, and a Windows 11 license costs an additional $139. The CyberPower PC Gamer Master comes with Windows installed and activated. You don't have to pay for it. So in reality, if you include the cost of Windows, my build costs nearly $150 more than the Gamer Master. Now you could always opt for a free operating system like Linux, but you will then be limited in the kinds of games you can play. Or you could just install Windows and never activate it and never have to pay $139. Microsoft allows anyone to download and install Windows onto their PC and use it as normal without ever having to activate it. It doesn't hinder your performance or prevent you from doing anything important. All it does is place a watermark at the bottom right hand corner of your screen that tells you to activate Windows. And it doesn't let you change the background on your desktop. A minor inconvenience in the grand scheme of things. So for me, the way I look at it is, if I have a strict $1,000 budget, I'd rather spend all of it on hardware to maximize my performance, then use the free version of Windows, which really isn't that different from the paid version of Windows, and then save up the $140 necessary to get a license for Windows later down the road. There are also ways to get Windows for much cheaper by purchasing license codes on third-party websites, but I won't discuss that too much as it is a bit of a gray area. But in any case, if you want to do right by Microsoft, the fact that the CyberPower PC Gamer Master includes an activated Windows will be a factor you'll need to consider, because if we had to take $139 out of our budget, we would have had to downgrade our build significantly, and the performance comparison between these two systems would have been a lot different. Another point that needs to be considered in terms of overall value is the storage capacity of both of these PCs. We opted for a one terabyte NVMe SSD, whereas the Gamer Master comes with a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Now the price difference between 500 gigabytes and one terabytes of NVMe SSD storage is fairly insignificant. For some models, the difference can be as low as $15 between the one terabyte option and the 500 gigabyte option. However, since CyberPowerPC opted for a 500 gigabyte drive, you'd need to purchase a whole new 500 gigabyte drive to match the one terabyte of storage in our build. And right now, the cheapest 500 gigabyte SSDs fall between $30 to $40. You may not need the additional storage, and you can always wait to add more storage later, but depending on the kinds of games you play, 500 gigabytes just isn't enough for gamers who like to play today's top titles. In benchmarking both PCs, I had enough space on my build to download all of the six games we tested on. But on the CyberPower PC system, I couldn't fit all of the games onto the 500 gigabyte drive at the same time. Granted, games like Starfield, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk, and Assassin's Creed take up a lot of space. But games are getting bigger, and only having 500 gigabytes to start with might be a big con for someone who has a larger library of games. 
500 gigabytes just might not cut it for you. And so if you were choosing between these two systems, you'd have to take the value of the extra 500 gigabytes of storage space into consideration. But all in all, we think the CyberPower PC Gamer Master has a slight edge when it comes to overall value, simply because it comes with a keyboard and mouse combination and you won't have to pay to get Windows. If you already have a solid keyboard and mouse though, and you don't mind using a non-activated copy of Windows, this category would be more of a wash, if not a slight edge to our build. So there we have it, six different categories. We believe our build won three of them, and we think the CyberPower PC Gamer Master won at least two, and depending on your view on aesthetics, maybe even three. So what does this mean for you? If you're looking to get a new gaming PC, which one of these systems would be the better option for you? It really all depends. Even if you were to say that this pre-built system offers the better aesthetics, and therefore there is a three to three tie in which PC won each category we discussed, you might value different things and place a higher weight on one of these categories than another. For me, I will heavily weight performance into my decision. And so even if the pre-built PC won all of the other categories, since my PC build vastly outperforms the Gamer Master, I would still likely lean in that direction. For those who prefer the convenience of getting a pre-built system, the in-game performance difference between these two systems may not be that big of a deal. The Gamer Master was still able to run everything at 1440p resolution with a decent enough frame rate. And maybe you just want a game at 1080p resolution where the RTX 4060 and the CyberPower PC system will be more than enough for your needs. In that case, the CyberPower PC Gamer Master would be the better option. Then there are other things to consider as well, like future proofing. Even though we gave the nod to the CyberPower PC system in that category, if you're building a PC, you could just as easily have switched up your part list to make it more conducive to upgrading later down the road. So while the pre-built PC may have won that category, it could have just as easily gone the other direction if I would have made some different component choices. In the end, both of these systems have their own pros and cons. We will always opt to build our own PC with exceptions to when we're creating content for you guys, as we enjoy doing it and we like that it gives us more control over the kind of system we can build. If building a PC isn't for you though, a pre-built desktop like this CyberPower PC option is a solid alternative. In any case, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Which of these PCs would you choose if you had $1,000 to spend right now? And if you were going to build your own system, would you build it like we did or would you change anything? Let us know in the comments. But that does it for this video. We really appreciate you all watching. If you wouldn't mind, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to check back for our next videos. Have a good one and we'll see you next time.